Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today's build will be the Dual Dagger Ailment Poison build. We're going to be running Flurry, we're going to have it channeled, and we're going to be putting as much poison as we can on enemies. Now, this isn't going to be as fast as a big AoE hitter or something that does straight up hit damage, especially with how much crit multi you can get on the road. However, this thing does do exceptionally well, better than I thought that it would do, as it's not a crit build. Even though you do get crit hits with Flurry, but they do very, very little damage, you're just applying the poison. But on the training dummy, we were able to get 150 to 200,000 damage where the poison tick stacked up. And since it is an ailment bit, it does take a bit of time to build up your damage. However, against bosses, this thing does go through them relatively quickly, especially since once you stack that amount of poison on them, their health just starts to drop really, really quick. And it's actually a lot of fun to play. Now, I came up with this build based on the version of my dual dagger lineage 2 build that i used to just be in love with many many years ago and i'll tell you what it feels quick it attacks so fast and it reminds me of it a lot especially when you get all the buffs going all right let's go ahead and get into the skills for skills we're running a flurry shift acid flask smoke bomb and decoy for Flurry, we have 3 points in attack speed increase, 1 point in boundless blows to make it into a channeled skill. This also gives it a mana cost of 5 per second, but later in the street you'll get that mana back rather quickly. As a channeled skill, it attacks very, very fast, and it's just super nice. Again, with channeled though, it means you're not going to be moving very much, but when you team this up with shift, you can kind of bounce around a little bit, so it's not super bad. You'll also have some health on hit and lots of leech, so it should be fine. One point accelerating impact will also increase the damage per second for the longer that you channel it. This is really nice as well, especially against single targets with rares and bosses. We have two points in blood ravelry so that you have increased leech, one point in second wind for that health gain on hit as long as you hit an enemy, and two points on sap willpower for two mana gain for every hit the skill does when you're channeling as long as you hit an enemy. This is also very nice because it'll basically give you more than the five mana back that it's costing per second. It lets you stay in it infinitely. It'll actually give you mana back if you're using other skills. For us, we're using, you know, decoy and smoke bomb, which cost a lot. And you can get all that mana back and stay full mana the entire time, even if you put those on autocast and have full uptime of them going. We have one point in deep strikes for some more multiplicative damage, three points in vile tactics, so that the first strike has additional poison chance, the second strike has some flea chance, we're not too worried about that, and the third strike does poison shred. Very nice. Two points of precision to increase the critical strike chance. This is base crit. Not a huge thing, but you do have to take it in order to get down to shockwave. We have one point crescendo, which changes the hit damage of the skills around so that the first two don't do very much. The third one will hit even harder. One point in shockwave so that you get a force wave on use. This is not a second hit. This is just an extension of your hit. So it basically gives you area, kind of like area increase on shatter strike. So you basically turn this melee skill into a mid-ranged melee skill. You can you can be ranged away a little bit and two points and building waves so that that range is increased by 30% and just to quickly show you what I mean by that when you use it normally you don't have this extra arc you just have that first arc now you can see you can get almost three times as far away so you literally are about shattered strike range in one direction it's not fully around you but it does allow you to have some range and just as you can see my mana is going down once you're actually hitting an enemy your mana just filled back up instantly all right back to the skills for shift we're using shift to drop acid flask because acid flask is huge for this build um, a couple of things about this you also get healed you also do melee attacks while shifting so you hit things you're invincible while shifting you get your mana basically back on shift you get haste on shift and you get an incredible amount of dodge it's actually ridiculous how much dodge you get for shifting even though it only lasts for one second the cooldown on shift is 2.7 seconds that basically means one third of the time you dodge with the maximum amount of dodge you'll have the 75 percent cap no problem we have one point unseen strike so that you do melee damage along the path two points our melee damage isn't that high by the way so it's not a huge buff it's just something we took feel free to change it somewhere else we have two points in shadow recuperation so that every time we shift we have 30 health healed four points in swift recovery 
so that we gain back 16 mana for using this. You gain back 48 if you happen to be below half health when you use it. 3 points in momentum so that we get a haste buff for 1.5 seconds. We have 1 point in shadow slip so that you're invulnerable while shifting. 5 points in elusive so that you get 150 dodge per point of decks absolutely ridiculous i'll show you just how ridiculous this is on this build we happen to have 45 decks so when we shift here you can see our dodge normally is 51 percent we have 893 dodge when we shift we have 12,600 dodge we have the full 75 percent cap for one second so you're basically going to dodge everything for one second after you shift luckily it has a cap otherwise we would be exploiting that to the max then we have two points in Parting Gift so that we have an Acid Flask on Departure and two points in Arrival Gift so that we have an Acid Flask on Arrival. This makes it really nice so you don't have to manually cast the Acid Flask. You just shift in, hit your enemies with it because of where you arrived and where you departed from. So you have high dodge going into the fight. You have haste if you need to run away real quick. And you have Acid Flask to go ahead and take everything that Acid Flask is going to do to the enemy right off the bat so you can start channeling Flurry right away. For Acid Flask, Acid Flask is huge in the poison department. The whole left side is basically just poison, 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 which is awesome. We have three points in Caustic Concoction so that every hit you do with Acid Flask, basically each each one that you throw is going to have a 45% poison chance on top of any other global poison chance that you have. We have four points in Contamination so that you shred the resistance of your enemies by 600%. That's huge, you'll notice your damage flies up between an enemy that has Acid Flask that's hit it recently and one that hasn't. It's definitely going to increase your damage. We have one point in Poison Pools so that the Flask now has a pull of poison that, it will, that enemies will sit in and have damage done to them over time. 5 points in Hydrochloric Acid so that if you are standing in the Poison Pool, you have a 100% increased poison chance, which is huge. 3 points in Tempered Glass for 3 stacks of Armor Shed applied to all enemies when you hit enemies with an Acid Flask. 3 points in Layering Toxicity so that the pool duration lasts much longer. And 1 point in Amatoxic Pools so that you have a chance every second to affect enemies with Effectious Toxins, which all it does is make them take 10% more damage over time, isn't super huge, but it is a more damage modifier, so it does help a little bit when they are infected. The reason I didn't put any more points than 25% chance is usually you have multiple pools, so within a few seconds, you're just, or even a second, you're guaranteed to have that on the enemies. For Smoke Bomb, Smoke Bomb is also a huge boost to your um, build here, because it's going to give you a crap ton of Glancing Blow. If you stay inside of your smoke bomb you will have 71 percent glancing blow you get basically 50 percent glancing blow from this skill all by itself or 40 percent it's a huge amount that glancing blow gives you 35 percent damage reduction against hits so it's very nice to have it especially against bosses because you are you know in melee range we have one point in shrouded in darkness so that we get a dust shroud buff each second for two seconds while we are in smoke cloud this gives us five percent glancing blow and 50 dodge rating with four points at rapid concealment you now get one every half second and just to show you how powerful this is i'm going to show you our dodge is going to go up and then our defense that's we have 31 percent glancing blow when we use this you'll see our glancing blow starts climbing as we get the buffs you'll max out at eight as they start wearing out but you get 71 percent gb and you go up to 65 percent dodge just for being that cloud now it only lasts for six seconds but you have an 8.8 .8 second cooldown so for 2.8 seconds those buffs are going to start you know coming off and by the time they're almost worn off it's gonna be time for you to cast it again and they'll start coming back so for the most part you have very high uptime of that dodge and of the glancing blow chance for our other points we have five points in lingering fumes for 50 percent increase in duration this is what makes that base four seconds turn into six seconds we have five points in smoke blades to increase your melee damage. Not a huge thing, you can definitely put these points elsewhere if you want, but we just did it so that we can have some additional leech out of the skill. And three points in blood bandit gives you that 6% melee leech, which helps with your survivability because leeching back life is one of the fastest ways to get life back. We have one point in thick smoke so that we apply slow stacks, and one point in eroding fumes to apply armor shred stacks. 
for decoy, decoy is set up so that we're throwing three decoys, and the decoys, instead of having explosions, will have acid flask explosions, which basically means they're poisoning the enemies around you. And then when they decay, when they explode, or when they disappear, or whatever you want to call it at the end, they'll each throw down three flasks, which means nine acid flasks will be thrown, which is just a secondary way to basically time it to where if you shift and throw decoys at the same time, you don't have to shift again to get the acid flask on the enemies. You can just wait till your decoys explode and basically you can go a little bit extra longer just channeling flurry and not having to interrupt that we have one point in embedded spikes so they reflect a little bit of the damage one point in lasting presence so they last a little bit longer it has the same ratio of duration as it does cooldown so it lasts a little longer but you're still waiting to cast the skill again we have two points in into the shadows you have increased flat dodge rating when a decoy is active one point in on fire, so it ignites nearby enemies. This increases the mana cost. We have three points in Kethan oil, so the ignite frequency is increased. All of that is converted to poison with one point acid flumes, so that the ignite becomes poison chance and the explosions are replaced by acid flask, which is what we really want to build into. We have one point in boom, two points in short fuse, two points in burning oil, two points in meticulous construction, and all of that just so we can get two points in grand diversion for the extra decoys. And then our final two points are in efficient construction for that 60% mana efficiency as quite a few of those nodes increased it, and we get it back down to a 49 mana cost, which seems like a lot but it's an 8 second cooldown and when you use it you basically get that mana back within a second or two from channeling flurry as long as you're getting hits on enemies. For passives we have 28 points in the rogue base class with 8 points in swift assassin, 2 points in lethal cadence, 1 point in steady hand, 1 point in twin blade, 5 points in dodge and parry, 3 points in duelist, and 8 points in poison tipped so that you have that increased poison chance with a dagger. No points in the marksman and 62 points in the master blade dancer with 8 points in cloak of shadows, 8 points in pursuit, 1 point in flow, 10 points in blood serpent's blades. This is huge. This gives you 50% poison chance per dagger and you're wearing two of them. It also gives you 50% more global damage over time which is also a huge benefit to the build. We have 8 points and once you don't need this, it just adds some melee physical damage, but this is just where we put our points. So we do have some hit damage, because that hit damage is going to be something we leech for survivability. We have 1 point in Scarlet Stream, 4 points in Crimson Shroud, 5 points in Blood Dance, again to boost our melee damage that leeches health so that we can, you know, have a little bit more survivability. 1 point in Flash of Steel and 10 points in Weapons of Choice, which with 2 daggers gives us 150. 50% increased poison chance. We have one point in Asuvin's Pact, one point in Perfection, one point in Confidence, and three points in Exuberance, just so you deal more damage with all of that, because the damage is going to be poison damage, and that's going to allow you to do a little bit more damage while you are at full health, and that's why we went with a lot of leeches, so that we can stay at that full health limit. For items, what you really want is the poison chance per dagger equipped. We happen to find four of them, however the suffixes on these are not that great. We did get some poison resist, we did get some armor shred effect, but two of them, or one of them has bow critical strike chance, which we don't need, and the other one has bleed on bow hit, which also is unaffected to us. So there are some better ones that you can find, however, you can get between a 13 and 35% chance to poison per equipped dagger. They seem to fall pretty often. I've already found four of them rather quickly, although a couple of them are low rolls. But they really pull the build together as if you do get towards that maximum, you can get up to 280% more poison chance total, which is pretty big for the build. For our weapons, we're wearing two Majasin daggers. They both are going to have poison damage and melee attack speed on them, and I know what you're thinking, you're channeling flurry so melee attack speed doesn't increase it, however it does give a slight boost to the channeled ability. It's one of those channeled abilities that does stack with attack speed, not much, not as much as you know a full addition to it, but it does get formulated in there and you will attack a little faster with it. We also have chance to poison on hit and health on melee hit, which is very useful for getting your health back rather quickly. Our other one has all the same stats and poison damage, melee attack speed, chance to poison on hit, and health on melee hit. For our armor, there's no rare fixes. You just have vitality dex, increased health, and flat health. This is an item that you can get rather simply, and these affixes tend to fall more than the rare affixes when you are gambling 
for the armors. For the Blood Crown, we have Cooldown Recovery Dex, Poison Chance Pre-Equipped Dagger, which is a rare fix, but definitely helps with the damage of the build, and Increased Health. For our Amulet, we have Poison Penetration, Poison Damage, Health, and Dodge. For our Rings, we went with Silver Rings for the move speed. We have Vitality, Dex, Health, and Dodge. For our other one we have set, you can see we took these off our other character if you were watching that build. Uh, we have Set Physical, Set Necrotic, Hybrid Health, Increased Health on the belt. We have Increased Melee Attack Speed, Dodge Rating, and Hybrid Health on the gloves. Our boots have Set Fizz, Set Necrotic, Elemental, and Move Speed. And then our same tome has Set Fizz, Set Necrotic, Flat Health, and Elemental Resistance. For our character sheet, as you can see, we're slacking in the Elemental Resist. You're going to want that on one or two more items, or on a couple of idols if that's where you'd like to put it. We have everything else capped. Our armor only sits at 20% damage reduction. We have 50% dodge, but as I said, the dodge tends to climb. You can get yourself, like I said, 71% glancing blow and 65% dodge while you're in smoke cloud, which is very effective. And then when you shift, you know, you can get almost 13,000 dodge, which is just absolutely ridiculous for a second. For the play style and how to use the skills of this build, what I like to do is I'll put Smoke Bomb on Autocast, and then you can just shift around and use Flurry. That's all you need to do. Throw your decoys out when you need them. And as you do this, the nice thing about it is you can see the damage on the stomach. You're critting for, you know, not very much. Your hit damage isn't very much, but our poison damage is quite a bit with it. And when you when you stack everything together and you make sure that you have the Acid Flask going off because the Acid Flask makes the biggest difference for it, you can see we're over 100,000 damage. You can get 150. I've seen as high as a 200,000 damage tick when you time it all correctly. And as you can see in the gameplay, it melts through bosses rather quickly, as fast if not faster than some of the hit builds that I've seen. Alright, let's go ahead and get into some more gameplay. <laughs> 